That's heartbreaking. Join two mates as they spend a weekend at one of their favourite locations, trying to satisfy a lifetime goal. Matt and Nige have only ever dreamt of taming a marlin on fly. Jump on board as they share the highs and desperate lows of trying to chase a fishing trophy. I've been fly fishing now for about 15 years. My father-in-law taught me down in southern New Zealand uh, after I was lucky enough to marry a beautiful Kiwi girl. I've always enjoyed fishing since, uh, since I could walk and uh, I think always mystified by the fly fishing and was always very keen to get involved and lucky enough I had that opportunity. Fishing today with a good fly fishing mate of mine, Matty. Say good day, Matty. Good day. And get back to work. He's on teasing duty. We've both grown up fly fishing, but over the last several years, we've been playing a lot more with soft lures, hard body lures, and baits. But as it is with that fly fishing bug, it has a way of drawing you back into the fold. And lately, over a few dinner party, late night drinks, we've started getting that urge to get out of shore and start chasing some bigger pelagics on the fly. Our wives have led us away for a few days. We're here in Fraser Island, playing the playing the surrounding waters for all the sorts of fish which hang around here. The idea was to come and chase mackerel and tuna, but on the way up, as plans often do, have a habit of changing. Someone told us there's a few marlin kicking around, so a lot of mates at home are backing us out, saying we won't catch one on the fly, and who knows, they may be right. We've got some awesome gear on board, we've got a plan. We're gonna have a bit of a, a, bit of a play with the local waters, see if we can turn up. A fishing trip with Nige. Uh, definitely get with the program and uh, listen to Skipper all day long because he's going to bark at you. So pack your thick skin and, uh, and hold on tight because it's always an exciting adventure. The approach of teasing up marlin to catch him on fly is often a bit of a contentious one because some anglers will argue that you're not really casting a whole lot for those fish and for the moment I'll leave all the politics aside. I find it a very intriguing approach because what you're trying to do is find fish, bring them to your boat and at the same time change their mood to where they anger up, you'll see their colour change and then what you want to do is try and switch them onto a fly where they're looking for something that suddenly gets replaced by a fly. So there's a fair bit of timing, a fair bit of technique which goes into actually getting that fish to take a fly. What we're going about it at the moment is we've got Matt, he's my teasing buddy and it doesn't mean he's being nasty to me. What he's doing is he's trying to control fish that come into the wash to try and get them close enough to the boat so that I can have a shot on the fly. With the teasers we've got a little bunch of rubber skirts and fish out the back fluttering away on the top to see if we can bring fish to that. Idea being if they do come on that, we then want them to drift back onto the, the bait tees and what we've got is a skirt enveloping a little fusilier. It's a really tough bait fish and ideally what we want to do then is get the marlin to have a taste of that. You find once they've had a bit of a taste of fish, they really G up and then it's a case of what Matt will then do is slowly try and bring the fish back to the boat. He'll get that marlin really G'd up right in the back line of the boat and as I tell him to, to go, he'll pull that bait clean out of the water I'll replace it with the fly and if it all goes to plan, marlin eats fly. Striking then is never a rod strike, you want to strip strike, really jam the line, try and pull those hooks home and let the fun begin. Okay, out. He's on it. Yeah, got him, got him, got him. Drive Got us him. out, drive us out, drive us out. Yep, he's just shaking his head down deep. Right, eh? He's well hooked, dude. Woo. Hopefully. They are awesome at throwing hooks, so we'll just see how we go. Take your time with it, mate. So good time. This is an awesome little rod to be doing this on. It's a 10 weight from the Explorer family. It's a Guide 2, the Guide 2 series. They pack an awesome punch. You can really punch out a fly on them. Probably not really doing them justice today because we're letting these really short little casts go, but mates of mine that have used these are so impressed. Meeting and about them is a great rod from the intermediate through the experienced anglers. Johnsy from Tackle Safaris became involved in our fly marlin project fairly early on in the piece. I got chatting to him at a trade show 
seven or eight months ago and, and told them what we wanted to do in terms of going and chasing some big fish on the fly and, and maybe a marlin. And that's where he, he became a bit emotionally involved and, and obviously as good fly fishers do, they love a challenge and he did his best to help us out. And he put into my hands some tackle that he said had been producing some great results around the planet. And um, what he did then was set me up with some, some 10 weight gear in terms of some of the Explorer range. And initially I thought this might be a little bit light, but he assured me it was plenty of guts in it to, to get the job done should we come across a billfish. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Got a bit of juice in him yet, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, she's got plenty of juice, mate. It's pretty lit up, aren't they? Just a splendid fish. To be doing this on fly is just outstanding. Matty and I have caught them a whole different swag of other means. To do it on a fly is something we've wanted to do for so long. Using a, a 10 weight line, it's a 400 grain fly line, it's approximately 50 metres, it's got 10 metres of 400 grain at the top which is a, it's a shooting head with a fast sink so it gets the fly down quickly, lets the fish see it in the wash of the boat, finished off with a 150 pound litre and a crisp beach fly is an absolute wizard when it comes to making. Flies for our Aussie species, this fish has got a bit of life left in here yet. Really want to use your rod to full advantage when you're tackling fish like this, let it absorb a lot of their power, a lot of their jumps, main thing is just trying to keep a tight line to them. It's heartbreaking. That first fish taught us a whole lot of lessons and losing it hurt a whole lot. <laughs> We'd obviously tried really hard to try and get that fish in the boat. That night we reminisced a little bit over a few drinks and worked out what we'd done wrong and it's pretty easy to see. I'd made a lot of novice mistakes. Um, that fish, once it started running away, we, we should have kept the boat going and got as much line out there, let the weight of the line in the water keep the hook in place and try not to get that fish running at you. Um, whenever you're winding that line onto the reel, obviously keep it as tight as you can just to stop that bunching effect. I bunched way too much line onto the reel there and that caused so much grief when the fish got to the boat. We all panicked. I got Maddie to try and rush the leader shot and from there it all went pear shaped. The hardest part then was knowing if we'd actually get a second shot. What I really love about fly fishing is that, that instant of that first fish that you get where you've been trying and, and you feel like you haven't got the, the skills or the knowledge to catch the fish on the fly and when that first one hooks up, you get a belief in yourself and a confidence and then from that moment, every fish teaches you something different in every situation, in every weather. Uh, you're constantly learning and evolving within the sport. Getting your fly gear right is important. There's, there's a lot that goes into casting effectively and taming fish, and that, that's to do with getting your weights right, matching the right line to the rod, having the right reel for the, the type of drags you've got to put on your fish. And I think also everything has to feel right in your hand. That's, that's the beauty of, of fly fishing, and everybody is different, and they all like different things. The, the neat thing with the gear that we used in this little mission of ours is that we didn't just get to cast at a marlin, but we also got to go and play with some rampaging packs of tuna and have a bit of fun on them. So I certainly got to put the gear through its paces. I can say that it certainly came through with the goods, whether we were casting at fast pelagics or chasing billfish from right behind the boat. While we're waiting for a fish to come onto the teasers, we want to be really on the go when it comes to putting the fly in front of a fish. We can't have a messy situation because it's all about timing. Best place to have it, fly, fly rod sitting in a really clean corner of the boat. Ideally have the fly sitting behind the boat so we don't have a mess of line that can get tangled when we want to quickly pick the rod up. 
It's never going to be a long cast. We ideally want to have the fish at the back of the boat. The fly that we're using is the same colour. It's a Chris Beach fly. Same colour as that pink skirt we're using on the teaser, so the fish is not going to be confused by suddenly getting faced with different colours coming at it. And the idea when casting is it's a really short, sharp cast. What I want to do is slap that fly under the water. Well, the idea being that we've got the teaser in front of the fish, we want to quickly pull it away, and as that fish suddenly looks for something else, the fly's going to suddenly slap on the water and make a presence felt. The fish is going to turn on it, line strike, and hopefully away we go. That's the plan. Just got to find a few now. Oh yeah. He's on you. I'm not going to let him get it in his gob, mate. No. You ready? Yep. Say when, mate. Yep. Now. Yes. I'm just going to drive go, away go, from go, you. Go, 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 go. Drive away from you. Yeah, yeah, I'm driving. There he goes. Right up. Slow up. Slow He's up. Slow up. Slow up. He's going. Yes. Whew. Got the adrenaline going. Ready? Which way are you want him? 300 metres, Where do you want it? Yeah, this is good. Just let him do his thing. I want him just to run. That fly line is all out there, so he's got plenty of weight keeping the fly hopefully stuck. Whew. Well teased. We're out again on the marlin hunt. He's way out. He's way out. No, that's good. Our wives have let us stay and play a little bit more. <laughs> Bless them. Bless them. They're playing in our favour. Some of those brownie points came in handy. And overnight, we uh, lamented some of our lessons from yesterday. Things that we learned about playing with marlin and fly. We were coming out to chase mackerel and tuna. And we looked at the flats Couldn't resist, and went, couldn't resist. Let's have one more go. Just watch that line tension on there, Nige. <laughs> I'm onto it. <laughs> I'm onto it. The technical aspects of catching a marlin on fly do get pretty political. I think in game fishing tournaments, you've got a, a crew of at least three. You've got to tease your fish to the back of the boat. Someone has to kick the boat into neutral so it's not in gear. The cast is made. Hopefully the fish eats it, and then you go away to land the fish, and that constitutes a male on fly. Well, I'm used to fly fishing on my own, let alone with someone else there. So to have a crew of three, not always practical. For Matt and I, it was all about using a, a fly rod and reel and line, teasing a fish, making a cast, hooking and landing a fish on fly gear. And for us, whether your boat's still slightly moving or not, we'll take those captures any day of the week. It's been a while, we're at the, getting close to the final stages. This is where we failed before. We're all a little bit nervous. We're uh, just slowly driving this fish around and just letting him do his thing and hopefully we can get him close enough soon so Matt can get a, a bill shot on him. I'd love to be able to show this to you very soon. Come on. Come on, mate. We're going to let you go. We just want a quick look at you. This fish has decided to... There's a few dirty tactics with us. He's using his way to good advantage. And he's gone down out of the deeper water. He was basically sitting underneath the boat and just slugging it away. So we've decided to change strategy, take him into the shallows. I'm going to try and beach him and get our hands on him and let him go that way. This has got to be one of the more special things I reckon I've done in my fishing time. And that's a fly on marlin. And the way that this fish has dictated terms, he's forced me to the beaches. Someone's probably said that once before. And to be able to land one of these iconic sports fish on a fly, on a beach like this. Stuff that I'll never ever forget. Oh, Matty. Well done, Nige. This is the stuff we've been dreaming of. Late nights, planning attacks offshore. We only could have dreamed of doing this is to be able to land a fish like this on fly in a place like this. A beautiful setting. And it's a beautiful with, fish. Coming with a plan of attack and the gear to do it. 
Seeing this in your hands, well worth the effort. Mate, let's get him a little bit off the water and let's let him go. Get a swimming time. Let's get him out of here in no way. Definite bucket list fish for me would have to be the bone, like everyone else, every other fine fisherman, fly fisherman. Uh, permit, amongst uh, all the other fish, definitely uh, top of the list would be a billfish on the fly. And for a long time, it's been a dream, and uh, fingers crossed, one day. Matt and I learned a lot about our teasing over a couple of days, and we certainly adapted what we're doing from initially a pink skirt over a bait fish to after, days after that, we started using pushes to try and tease our marlin to the back of the boat. And our thinking was to use a really adaptable pusher, and for that we reached for the, the scent blazer range because they are made for, for trolling with a variety of apparatus behind them. In this case, we used the head because it's hollow and allowed us to then pull a mullet head into the back of that pusher and give the lure a lot of added scent. To do that, we drilled a hole through the top of a mullet head, we put a cable tie through it, and at the tail of that cable tie, we, we crimped a sinker on to give the whole lure a bit of weight. And effectively what that did then was it still swam beautifully. That scent blazer head put out plenty of wake and disturbance, which, which got marlin activated very quickly. And then when they came and had a bit of a chew on it and got the, the flavor and the scent of that mullet, nothing was holding them back. Every fish that came up and, and whacked this with a bill, we generally got back to the boat and very happily looking at a fly that we threw at it shortly after that. When the marlin first turned on the fly, time stops. All I could think of was, I can't lose this fish. Next thing I hear is Nigel screaming in my ear, now, 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 strike up, and away we go. The experience I had catching these marlin in such a beautiful location will certainly be with me forever. Um, a culmination of, of a fantastic fish in one of my favourite spots in the world. What gets better than that? Being able to, to fight such a beautiful fish, hold it briefly and release it back into the wild, watch it swim off, is, is, will be unforgettable. And uh, definitely the satisfaction of ticking uh, another great fish off my bucket list, is, uh, that's hard to forget for anybody. Things which will stay with me forever following these marlin on fly encounters will be obviously the sensations and looking at that fly rod in your hand and line getting stripped away while in the distance this majestic animal cartwheels and dances in the horizon. But I think so much more than that, it's, it's the satisfaction which comes with it. The, the days and days of planning, trying to make sure our gear was right, working out how we were going to tease fish and then seeing it all come together and, and being able to share that with a great mate in a great place. Um, being able to, to land a fish 
on the beach in shallow water. Those sorts of visions are with me forever. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show. And if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.